Welcome back. A little bit of a hiatus there. I haven't been recording a lot of videos recently because of internet connection problems. But we are back with the cut, the top eight cut from the San Rafael Store Championship. This is Gamescape North, San Rafael. Uh, I have with me today a new commentator, Tim Wong, helping me commentate. How are you doing today, Tim? Hey, pretty good, pretty good. And Tim was in this tournament. Tim was in the top cut. We might have some of his games uh, at some point. You've seen his games on this channel before. And uh, what did you think about this cut? Uh, I mean, I think I'm, I'm pretty public with, with uh, what I think of cuts in general. But I think overall, uh, if I remember right, in this tournament, Noah just dominated the tournament. But we had to play to a cut. Uh, Ravi was second in seed and Wes was fifth in seed, I believe. Yeah, and so Robbie is playing on the left here. Wes is playing on the right. Robbie uh, placed second in a previous store championship down in San, Santa Clara, and Wes always plays highly. So Robbie Fry and Wes Odom. Uh, Robbie playing Kit. Wes playing HP. Looks like we got a mulligan on the right. And uh, this tournament was back in... When was this? Was this February? Something like that. I think it was February. Um, yeah, I think it was a while ago. February. So there's... Yeah, so this was a... Uh, the the data pack uh, was just the order and chaos was the last one available so this was an order and chaos tournament but the valley was not out yet so overall I, no, luckily i don't remember this match very well so no spoilers for me but i would say that i don't know like between kit and hp i would give hp the nod here because I, I feel like kit has a lot of trouble with hp ETF often has a good amount of ice, and uh, that's a pretty good counter to Kit, just having a lot of a lot of ice, I'd say, especially in the early game here. Um, Wes installing some ice. I believe that is some next ice, and he'll get a credit for that install. Oh, he's going to be up to 10 credits. That's a great ETF start right there. Well, it really depends on what uh, what this kit is trying to do. I mean, if it's one of these aggro kits that like tries to establish huge amounts of control, which obviously it's not, because I mean, you just play Procon. But uh, I, can, I think it would be a, 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 an interesting play to double ice, possibly. Double ice rather than ice single ice both servers. Yeah, certainly. You want to get a, something like a next uh, bronze on the outside there would be a bad idea. So Wes has been known to play Toy Box in his deck. He, I don't know if he has been as much recently, but I think he still was as of this tournament. So that is something that Robbie's going to have to look out for. And it looks like Robbie is just building up right now, just uh, taking some credits. Uh, he has a daily cast in hand. I imagine he'll want to get that down pretty soon. Yeah, it looks like it's going to go, uh, you know, this is not control. This is not kind of an aggro at all, considering how much build there is. Um, I, I didn't catch it on my side of the video. Did, did we catch what the face down HP card is? Uh, I did not see that, no. But I mentioned Eliza's toy box just because I know he plays that card. But uh, yeah, I, 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 playing against Wes, I would be surprised if that was an agenda. Interesting. Is that a discard? Okay. Of cloak? Yes, you know, he had to overdraw with the pro con. He, so he needed the econ, he didn't have money, and then he wanted to put down the daily cast, and so he had to drop a cloak. Yeah, so this is Stealth Kit, looks like, or Stealth Kit, I should say. I don't know, like, I, I, I always feel like if I'm playing Stealth, like, Cloak is probably one of the, my favorite cards to draw. I, I probably wouldn't have discarded it, I would have discarded something else, but I have no idea what's in his hand. It's, it's kind of hard to see from the yeah. video. Well, he, he did have, he just installed a refractor, so that is the code gate uh, stealth breaker, and then he put down a ghost runner. So maybe he just figured, uh, all I need for the early game here is a ghost runner, and uh, yeah, that is the Eliza's toy box there in that remote. I so he is trashing it with ghost runner credits, and a sand sand is underneath it. I personally think this is a huge mistake. Um, consider Getting rid of the cloak? Well, against an HP is kit. I would really, really want to build just an endgame rig as fast as I could. Um, and that's, Cloak goes into it and Ghost Runner doesn't. And uh, I wouldn't I wouldn't worry about the... Well, I mean, I would definitely worry about the toy box. I mean, the toy box is huge, but... Um, I, don't, I don't really like this play, is, is what I'm saying. Like, I, I would probably sure. have played Cloak instead of Ghost Runner and just went for... You know, a and then um, you know, built a rig. 
And, uh, yeah, I mean, the, the good thing about that play is that he was able to kill the t toy box, but at the same time, he might have been able to let Wes uh, toy box out one piece of ice, considering that he could probably break it cheaply in the late game with his stealth rig, but he would need to deal with that toy box pretty quickly. That is true. So. All right, he's getting set up, though. He just uh, sure gambled. He has his daily cast coming in. Okay, and that is a score. So that is Vitruvius scored out. He says triggered with zero counters on it, referencing Astro Script, as co of course. <laughs> Playing fast advanced HP is always a little bit sad when you consider uh, Astro Script is not in faction. <laughs> so I, I don't really like this play either. I mean, I think Wes could, if he has an ice in hand, like, there's no way he's getting into that Sand Sand server. He could have probably just scored it naturally. Now, if he doesn't have an ice, okay, fine. I guess I guess you, you, you go for it. But, I mean, I don't know. It's a lot of credit to spend. Yeah, I mean, and as we see, Robbie was able to get in and with Dirty Laundry maintain his econ. He, he might not have had another ice to, to score it out. That's true. I mean, I, I can't see his hand, so I, I don't really understand the right. decision, but... I, I... He might have had uh, more agendas in hand, and so he was hoping to just chain him out, hoping that Robbie would let the sand sand sit for a turn that's maybe a gamble but then if he had agendas in hand i mean why doesn't he ice double double hq i mean that's what that seems to be the clear move rather than double double R &D. I would easily give up R D accesses if i have a ton of a uh, ton of uh, agendas in hand i would give up R D accesses and just let him go if he's gonna run it all you know i mean perhaps he feels like he need, he has the pressure like he has to win before stealth rate gets out And uh, another thing to consider here is, I'm, I'm guessing one of the, this ice here is uh, something like an archer, probably an archer, just because he had the toy box play he was trying to set up for. So uh, maybe that remote ice is the archer and you can't res it. Well, maybe, or it maybe doesn't want to really, right? Maybe that's the case, I don't know. Um, I guess he can res it now. I wasn't concerned he actually has an agenda scored. Oh, he puts down a Utopia Fragment Shard? I still can't keep track which is which. It's a uh, shard, right? I think it's, no. Sure. I have no See? no fragment. It's fragment because fragment. Okay. Because Hades shard is the one that's good for a corpse. So that's how I remember. Okay. Shards are so shards are agendas. Okay, so this is a Utopia fragment, which will let Robbie discard uh, or trash the fragment and randomly discard two cards. Another sand Ooh. sand. That's interesting. Ah, there we go. Oh, so he gets the domestic sleeper scored. I don't know about, like, it saves him one, but Robbie has clearly the amount of money to, like, blow up Sand Sand again. He's playing Kit. He's got a Code Gate Breaker. Uh, again, I don't agree with this play. I mean, I don't care what that ice is. Like, Ooh, okay. So if this is the Archer, he can... Okay, he's not doing it. <laughs> Never mind. <laughs> uh, I guess he still has a Stealth Credit. Oh, he has two stealth cards. He would have been able to break that uh, archer if it wasn't archer. Exactly. So. so I mean, at this point, like Robbie can Robbie can can get into any one of the ice server. It doesn't matter what the ice is. Uh, I guess except, except for curtain wall, but it's it, you know throwing enough credits. That's unlikely. Yeah, yeah, not enough credits here. And uh, we have another install in that remote. So, I mean, what Wes is doing here is definitely keeping him busy on that remote. Another Eliza's toy box killed. So, Robbie is doing a great job here of maintaining his economy while running. And, uh, yeah, putting, I mean, Wes has scored out two, three points at this, at this point in the game, which is good. He's ahead, but his econ is way uh, behind. Two and a half points. <laughs> yeah, let's call it two and a half. That's, that seems fair. So here we go. This is the, this is the game again. Throw something in the remote. <laughs> as long as Robbie keeps drawing those dirty laundries, though, this is uh, not a problem. Okay, so Jackson Howard here. Uh, so that's a use, right? Yeah, that's a use, and it was two sand sands and a toy box. Okay, I think that's fair. Um, I guess the sand sands are a way to train his economy. Um, but... And also, if, if he lets the Saints in sit for turn, he just gets to score out another agenda for six, what's that, seven credits, I guess? 
So I think I think my question my question here is how much ice is West playing? This has been multiple turns now, no ice plays. Uh, he, I, I'm sure he has. My guess would be 18 at minimum. I'm pretty sure he likes to play like 19 or 20 in this ETF deck. So perhaps he's just getting unlucky. I mean, I think. Uh, yeah, it could be. I don't think he's drawn any. He's not played any campaigns yet either. Although I don't know if they'd really survive. Okay, HQ here for the last click. All right, purges uh, all those virus counters there. Those virus counters. Goodbye. They're gone. And uh, I don't think Robbie's playing any viruses because he doesn't trash it. This could be his downfall. <laughs> yeah. Well, you know, um, there is an argument that he should have, he could have trashed it, just in that that's a uh, that's another kind of bluff play that Wes can can. I mean, it's, it's not a super good play at this point, but if that remote server gets built out a little bit more, where it's actually costing Robbie at least some stealth credits to get in, then he can just throw it down there as bait, and you know, ETF gets a credit for doing that. I don't know. I, I think I think it's actually you know I, I agree with you. I think um, it also makes a shard better. It makes his future accesses better. It's one less card to bait. Um, although and he had the econ. He could have he could have you know a credit wasn't really gonna matter there. Although I say that, and of course the classic thing happens where he he needs to get into that server at the last uh, point in the game to win, and he's one credit short. Yeah, that's true. That's true. No pressure on R&D this game, huh? Well, I, I don't think he... I, I think really Robbie should should be... So I, I don't know what... I don't understand that play. Like, why why three ice R&D? He's not running it at all. Three ice... Well, he's definitely sending the message that all the agendas are in R&D. Um, but he hasn't even made a move toward R&D yet. I mean, I would two ice the remote at, at the very least, because right now you have an unsafe remote. So you can get into... It. Doesn't matter what you have, like you know. Yeah, you can you're not it. even resin that ice. Oh, he gets the NAPD. So points are on the board here for Robbie. It is two to two currently. Two, two to half, two and a half, I suppose. Two and a half. Yeah. So uh, this is kind of the stalemate part of this game, I think. Um, I think Robbie just continues to rig build, um, considering there's no pressure from HP at this point. Um, the only thing that HP can really score uh, is domestic sleepers out of hand. You can't safely play anything in that remote. Um, and that remote needs to get two iced. I mean. And so here we have Wes going to look for more ice. I think Wes is l looking for more ice, and I think Robbie probably wants uh, more breakers before going into R&D. Yeah, both sides are just kind of staring each other down at this point. Uh, Robbie probably spends a click turn to, to get through HQ to get a, a access every time, um, just to keep him honest, I think. But, because um, I'm, I'm not really faring any of the, you know, traps in this deck. Like, I, I, I highly doubt that there's a snare in this or, or, or anything like that. So I think it's fairly safe considering it's, it's free, um, free-esque to uh, go to HQ. So second second of probably three Jacksons being played here. Yeah, and that is, I think, a hedge fund, another toy box, and a face down. Probably an agenda. I think I think this is where Wes's decision to not two ice um, is going to bite him. I, I have no idea what that ice is on the bottom, though. But... I would have tried to hold on to Jackson as long as possible to like build out my build out my board position. I mean, base he just I think he would have res that ice if he could. I think the only ice that can be is either something super expensive or an archer. Um, That's possible. He might be building like towards a double archer remote or something. <laughs> oh, biotic labor. Okay, so we're scoring out something here. Wes here taking the advancements a little bit slow, just in uh, in case something is going to happen. So and Wes played that in the right order, right? He installed the agenda first, and then he played Biotic Labor. So at that point, the Utopia Fragment uh, couldn't do any harm. If you Biotic first, then he can use Utopia Fragment and get the agenda before you can use it, and that's really bad for you. <laughs> yes, it is. It's an awful, awful thing. Luckily, I haven't done that in a real game yet. 
Well, it's it, you know, it's I could totally see myself doing that, just kind of forgetting that the fragment was there and just kind of going with the normal scoring pattern I go with or whatever. But so now uh, West is at four points, and we have NAPD scored at two for Robbie. Looks like he's modding out the dagger. Uh, he's not. So that is the sentry. Uh, that's the sentry, the stealth sentry. Use a stealth credit to boost it up by five. He's going into HQ. So uh, he didn't really need that dagger yet, but he decides to go in there, and he's going to trash the Adonis campaign. Oh, that's a smart play at this point. Uh, he's going to have to go after it anyway later if, uh, if West does play it. Yeah, certainly. And he his money is still looking really, really good. Between the dirty laundries, the daily casts, and the modded, uh... Nope. Oh, he does score a, a Gilahan. Yeah, is it Gilahan or Gilahan? I'm. I have. Well, I've always called it Gila Hands. Um, I don't. It's interesting. Um, I guess nowadays I've been seeing a lot less Gila Hands. I, I feel like uh, Corp. Corp just seems to have tons of econ options, and you just don't need to play it. Yeah, it, it's it's a pretty well balanced card. Like it doesn't show up everywhere, but. Um, oh. It's good. It's good in certain decks. I, th I think PE probably still plays that card. Looks like West just played Reverse the Count Siphon. <laughs> yeah. And it's even yeah. It, it's like uh, West gets a credit for the install and steals five and a click from the runner. That's not bad. I guess it's like like Reverse the Counts plus plus. Yeah, th this ice in this game. There's something going on with this ice because uh, I think this game would be going a lot different if West had a couple ice on that remote. With all these uh, these baits, he's been. Sending to the runner. I, 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 Another Adonis campaign. I'm just not getting the three ice. I mean, I haven't even seen an R&D. Like, there's no R&D interface or any clue that there might be an R&D interface coming. Except for the fact that green's on the other side, like, you know, Shaper. But, uh... Well, as long as Robbie can just keep going into HQ to get the agendas or into the remote, he doesn't even really need to go into R&D. So he probably is trying to get an R&D interface, uh before going into that, into r and I'm actually not clear that he actually has one. I mean, he might not. He might not. It seems like he probably would have drawn one by now if, if he did. I mean, he is playing Procon. I can't quite see his hand. I know I know there's a torch. Oh no, that's a SMC. It, I, I couldn't tell it was one of the two. <laughs> they all kind of look the same on video, I think. He just drew another pro con. I think he might have a battering ram in hand. Oh yeah, look, that that looks like a battering ram. So, what, is he? No, he's got the memory. So, he's got a full rig, possibly. Okay, that is next silver. So he can break it, but uh, he will need a barrier breaker pretty soon. And trashes the third Adonis campaign. <laughs> yeah, he's he's really trashing his econ. I mean, HB usually has way more money than this. I uh, well, I guess that th those two sand sands really sucked up it. Two sand summer, sands huh? and a biotic. Um, yeah, that's true. But considering the board position, like I mean, I probably would have res that next over like instantly, and then I would have just clicked for credits. Like I'm not fearing a siphon. Like there's. Well, th so this next silver is a new piece of ice. He replaced the old one that was there. Oh, did he? Okay. Yeah. La last turn, he replaced it. So, yeah, he, he was building up for this right here. And, uh, yeah, so now he's saying you got to get a barrier breaker out. Uh, presumably, he could res what's ever in front of it. Might be uh, might be something like next bronze and then agenda. And there is the battering ram out. So battering ram will break next silver. Oh, Archer. So Domestic Sleepers is going away. And it is the first piece of ice encountered, so Kit can break it with Refractor, or... Yeah, I, 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 it could also just use Dagger, I suppose. Yeah, at this point, I don't know if I would have given up the point. Yeah, it's, it's odd, because it's going to... It's really going to cost four, maybe, f like, five or six credits to get in, which is expensive, but, uh... No, it's only... That's an agenda. It's only going to take two stealth credits and 
four. So four to break the archer, and then I think, I don't know, how does ba Batteram break? I, I can't Batteram remember. Is, Another two. Batteram is uh, what, two per two. Okay. So yeah, it works out great here for the the next silver, but another next dice res, and that's a little bit inefficient. Yeah. But he does score the ABT down there. So I mean, Wes needed to do this. So in the in the long run, Wes needed this ice res. So I don't know about that. Now it it does cost the runner six credits to get in there currently, because it does cost you know ignoring stealth credits even it costs four and then two. I I mean I I don't know about that like because an alternative play could have been. Put another ice, not archer, anything but archer, on HQ, and just sit there, and every turn gain credits. Like, it's pretty inefficient for him to get into HQ at that point. If if another ice, a next ice is in HQ, and you just sit there, I have five cards in hand. Um, you, you can run into it. That's fine. Um, and then just wait to biotic out another ABT. Yeah, biotic out another two, uh, a three two, and then and then bump the domestic win. and win. Because he's at four, domestic would put him at five, and then a, a, another two points would, would give him the win. At this point, he has to score three, or another domestic and a two. Um, right. So I, I don't know about this. I guess it would depend on if he has any fast advance tools, and uh, I mean we know he has them in the deck. He's got. So he would, I'm gonna guess he, he has another. Actually. He has another sand sand and two biotic. I'm gonna guess. Or maybe just one more. He put some sand sands back. I, I think one of them got trashed, so there's probably still another sand sand in the deck, and you're probably right on. Oh, there's a sand sand. All right, so he stim hacked that one. I mean, I I I think I think um, Wes might be thinking here. Oh, I need to create scoring window by playing a card down there. But he's got two. No, he's got two cloaks. Is that, yeah, he's got a cloak. It's it's a cloak, and he has a silencer, so he can get the dagger up to ten string. Yeah, so so he, it's not even costing that much to get into that server. It's it's he's got a cloak. It's costing it is costing six real credits. I mean, and that's significant. That's true. But you know, I I don't think you're gonna actually create a true window at this point. Like you might create a window to score it with sand sand or biotic, but I don't think you're gonna true create a true scoring window at this point. So I'm I'm starting to agree with you more. Like I, yeah, I feel like he might be really constrained on ice in weird ways. I feel like that was another cyberdex trial. Two cyberdexes. But, uh, wow, and this is pre valley. Yeah, you know the Orin Chaos had had just come out like a few weeks before. Um, not even a few weeks, probably a couple weeks before, right? I can't remember when that came out. But uh, yeah, that, that card was really popular when it first came out. I was running one of it for sure. I think Wes likes two. This was the first, uh, I remember this was the first tournament where both uh, both I and um, uh, Paul ran ran the Hive Mind deck. Um, so I, I don't think people were meddling against this my, uh, the, the deck until until after this, really. Did you see a lot of cyber decks at this tournament? No, not really. Um, no. And this is where, where this is like both Paul and I got into the finals. We beat nearly everyone pretty handily. Um, now I remember in the next regionals, um, or not regionals, the next store championship, everyone meted like super hard against it, and uh, everyone was running at least to cyber decks. Yeah, I was very happy with that card from the start, just as a one-of. I've never gone beyond one, but uh, it, it helps you in so many situations. And, it like, for HB ETF, it's good just to, like we were saying, just to throw down the... Like, if he threw down the Cyberdex on that remote right now and Robbie really needs to go check it, that's costing Robbie a lot to get in there. And ETF, it doesn't really cost you much more than a click. You get the, the credit for it, so... Oh, there's a... Interesting. So that's a corroder. I wonder why he's the corroder and the battering ram. Battering ram is two memory. Is that true? It is two memory. And yeah, I, I don't get that. If if you have the influence to run corroder, why not just run SMCs instead of battering rams? Okay. So this is the first run here on R and D. 
<laughs> Next silver with three subs. So that cost Baton Ram uh, four credits. Four credits, credits yeah. Um, I don't really agree with this move. Um, in that. Oh, okay, but he's he's just using refractor, so it costs refractor three. It's still expensive. Yeah, that's that's expensive. This is where the next dice are really coming together. Yeah, I, I probably would have ignored RNG the entire game. Um, if you three ice in it, and you're playing next, I don't want to give you I don't want to give you the ability to res. So another factor here on this run might have been simply to to drain some money from from ETF. I, I suppose, but I'm not worried about a fast advance win. Like, you can't fast advance three points out. Um, I sit here, and I'm just going to run your hand every turn. I, I mean, that's that's the correct play. Um, I'm going to gain credits, establish board position, play more stuff, run your hand every time. Uh, if I start fearing a fast advance win, I, I, maybe I go there, but, but I, I, I don't like the idea of giving, give, throwing out more next dice. If you let HB have the money, though, what could happen is, I mean, Domestic Sleeper gets scored immediately for one credit, and then if they draw a 3-2 and have a Biotic in hand, you really need to hit it on the next turn, and if you don't, they're just going to win. That's true. But, uh... So I, I could understand why you'd feel pressure, um, but there's... knowing that they could just fast advance out. But but he doesn't have a multi-axis yet, so, like, this gets even worse. Like, I would be drawing... And... So Astrolabe triggers there. I would be drawing for... I don't know whether he has multi-axis, but I mean, I would at least be thinking about I want to pull an RDI before I attempt that. And my uh, he's out of credits, so like I mean, I would definitely be trying to build my board position here. Yeah, it's kind of surprising. Like usually with stealth, you want some multi-axis because towards the last part uh, end game, you can't really afford. You don't have the ability to get into a server more than once. And so you want to make that access count. Um, at least some maker's eyes or something. Yeah, I, I'm expecting... Uh, he's drawing. I'm expecting him to have something. And if you, and, and he still yeah. has the Utopia shirt. So, I mean, if I truly fear you having uh, multi... I'm mean, sorry, uh, fast advance, I just Utopia shard your, 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 you know, your jank out with, uh, you know, at least I hope I do, with uh, getting two random accesses and maybe hitting your body. Yeah, that's true. I guess if you see uh, Wes here install a card or play a Biotic, just use the Utopia in either case, and it's at least something. Well, I, I mean, I mean, he's not worried about a three. Um, it's not possible to score a three. He doesn't have the credits. Yeah, I, I definitely would be using this window to like just board, build my rig. He's going into R&D again. Yeah, I do not like this play. I mean, I guess he's using his uh, his recurrings, but... Right. Let's continue in. Yeah, three subs. He's able to get through that with just recurring credits. Um, something... Yeah, nothing can really hurt him here right now. He has the Ghost Runners as backup. Um, worst case, he wouldn't be... Like, it'd be too expensive to get in, I guess. But Wes here has five credits for res. Um, at the same time for Robbie, you know, he only needs one more 3-2 to win. Um, that is true. I, 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 and so just, I, you know. I'd be personally just hitting his hand as much as, like, gain, gain three credits, run your hand. Gain three credits, run your hand, or something like that. Or two credits, run your hand, or some, you know, draw cards with Procon. Find he could get into his hand multiple times, uh, I believe. That next bronze is up to three strength, and Refractor is three strength, so, uh, yeah, he, he doesn't even need stealth credits to get in, but he could use stealth credits. I'm just making the implicit um, assumption that he has multi-access somewhere in his deck. Yeah, I'm, I'm, he must. He must. I don't think I, I played against Robbie myself in any of these tournaments, but uh, he did very well. I think he, I heard that he was home from uh, school somewhere. He's a good player. He's a definitely a good player. I mean, I, I played him in the finals, and, and uh, you know, it was a rough game for me. I, I think it was a poor matchup for me, definitely. Like, I, I, I kind of felt like I, I lost at, at uh, deck selection, but uh, I certainly felt I, uh, I would feel much more confident. Uh, I had to play Noise into his NBN. I would have felt much more confident playing my NBN into, into Kit, I think. Yeah, I could see that. 
All right, so it does not see anything on top of R&D. Trying to figure out where those agendas are. I think they're cooling, aren't right? Oh, there's the RD high. Oh, uh, yeah, so he, <laughs> he's definitely playing it. So, yeah, I would have been trying for that. So, like, uh, he, he gets rid of uh, he has no, He has no memory. That's what it is. He gets rid of another cloak, but he has no memory. Oh, wow. So he just let that one go. He just, wow, that. Okay, well, now this just became a game. Wow, I, that's the good, good, good on West. Yeah, he just he just threw that down there and waited. <laughs> yeah, that was that was a great bluff. I I, did, I would totally didn't even notice that card got installed. Like it just. I noticed it. I, I just thought um, it was really dangerous considering he had an easy way into the server. Right. Yeah, he just kind of. Uh, Bet that Robbie wouldn't want to spend all that money to get in. Uh, especially now, it's even more expensive. It's 10, I think, to get in there. Okay, RDI down, and he is continuing in, so he's going to see two. Nothing. That is the game. So he gets a Vitruvius. Wow. I, oh, he did have a Biotic. I, I, felt like, I felt like there were so many things that could have gone wrong here. And, I don't know. For who? For, For both sides. <laughs> <laughs> no, I think they, they both played pretty well. I, I, you know, you were talking about how maybe West could have just reinforced HQ and then uh, saved that domestic sleepers, fast advanced out another 3-2 and then one. Uh, it seems like that might have been a better uh, line of play here. But um, then again, we don't really know what uh, caused West to play the way he did. So it would have been interesting knowing what that first, the first ice was that he played, that he never res and ended up going away. I mean, I, I think you're probably right. It was probably an archer um, that he couldn't res. But I, I don't, I don't know why he would have gotten because he eventually installed an archer there and eventually resed an archer. So so why did it seems like if that server was double archer, that would have been a really nice server. <laughs> well, he couldn't have res double archer, or maybe it was a low time. I mean, he, he just showed off a low time at the end of the game. Oh. So maybe it was a little time. Um, oh yeah, you know, and he was trying. He was trying that Eliza's toy box for so. He tried that a couple times. Yeah, that makes sense. That probably once he he realized that the toy boxes were all in the trash and that wasn't gonna work, he probably just uh, gave up on the Wotan. Okay, I mean, I think that's fair. Um, I, I yeah, that that makes sense. But but I felt like this game was a lot of tunnel vision, um, both players, um, which was interesting. Um, because Wes was really focused on fast advancing things out and not necessarily trying to just, you know, slow advance things out for, uh, in the early game. Later on, he, he ended up with that massive, like, uh, you know, balls in play of just putting the game on the line. But, um, so there was that, like, I'm going to fast advance everything, even though I don't necessarily need to. Um, whereas I feel like Robbie said, I'm going to be aggressive. Even though my deck isn't really built to be aggressive, but I'm, I'm going to do it anyway, um, which was interesting. He kind of switched into a more aggressive... At the start, he was very much just building up. I mean, pro con down, click one, and then just building, building, building for like three turns before he was really able to apply pressure. But And in the meantime, West did score a couple agendas. Uh, but he played it cool and then eventually switched into a more aggressive role and uh, was able to just maintain his econ until he won the game just trying to go through what robbie was probably thinking about i mean uh, just looking at his deck um and and kind of guessing about it um he discards cloak early uh which is which is strange um considering he had no rig and no no thoughts on um you know putting out breakers because he didn't have any breakers he drew the refractor later I wonder if he actually has no memory chips in, the, in that deck. I, I mean, I would assume he had memory chips, but maybe mm. maybe he doesn't have memory chips, and maybe that's why. Oh, I, I probably just the one Astrolabe. Yeah, so he's he's gonna get five memory, and that's it. Right. Yeah, probably. Um. So maybe that's why he discards cloak because he knows he can't run two cloak. Uh, yeah, maybe he just. Yeah, is that what you're saying? He probably just had another cloak in hand. Maybe. I mean, I, that's the only reasonable thing I can think of as to like why you would not want to cloak, because considering how cloak how good cloak is, um, right. in that deck, um, 
It just seems really strange to me that you would choose to discard Cloak, of all things. Well, I, he might have had two Cloaks. I mean, I know in that hand, he definitely had the Refractor and then the Ghost Runner and the Cloak. So we know three of those cards. The other two, he might have had a second Cloak that he, you know, didn't... Like, I guess in the early game, if you could play out a Cloak or a Ghost Runner, you might play out the Ghost Runner, just because it, like, it's a little more flexible, I'd say. But I wouldn't, um, I wouldn't... Yeah, it is more flexible, but I wouldn't play it to the detriment of a Cloak. I mean... I would have discarded some other right. card. I mean, anything. I would have discarded the shard. Like, the shard probably... Like, I would discard the shard over the cloak. I'm not sure if he had the shard at that point. But, uh, he, yeah, you might be right. He might have just had a second cloak in hand. I don't remember when he actually installed the cloak, but it wasn't too far into the game. So he might have just had a second one. It's possible. I, 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 I know I know if a, if a runner did that to me and I was in the corp, I would be very, very confused. Um... <laughs> I, I would sit there and think about it for, like, a solid minute. Like, why would he do that? Um, <laughs> that and that's why he did that. Just to just throw to screw, West Yeah, just screw with Wes. Um, cause, cause All right. Well, by uh, showing... we should probably finish up the broadcast here. Okay. And, uh, yeah, th this is the first of the, the top eight from San Rafael. I think we'll have at least two or three more, and there's, uh, like, several other tournaments I have recorded that I need to just commentate. But now that my internet connection is back online and looking solid, I will uh, catch up on that. And and uh, thanks for your continued support and watching. And do you have any last thoughts, Tim? No, no. I think I think overall it was interesting, interesting game. Yeah, for sure. All right. Thanks a lot for watching, everyone.